Hi all, it's Kylie from Kylie's Card Craft. Thanks for joining me again today. Right, back onto the six by six inch paper pads, or in this case, six and a half inch by six and a half inch. As I said last week, I have got so many of these Kaiser Craft paper pads that I am determined to get through them. We've got another little one for you today using these paper pads. Now you can use your 12 by 12, so that's fine. Um, but getting rid of all our scrapbooking card making supplies. That's what this is about. So most of us have done other crafts. Try and incorporating it into what we're doing now is what all this series is about. So this time now, and literally with our other genres of crafts that we've done through the years, I used to make these as greeting cards. So I've rehashed them a little bit because they work so well in our journals these days as secret journaling spots using my 12 by 12, my 12 by 12s, my 6 by 6 paper pads because they're single sided so they work really well. What we've got with these ones are our hidden journaling. So this is a full length one and he undoes like so. So it won't go any further. You can decorate it as you wish. So that's basic. This one's a little bit shorter, but I've made it as an actual journaling posy inside, front and back. You can decorate them any way you like, or just for a little bit different. I did a sideways one. Okay. Now this one, I made the mistake and I wanted to use this paper, but it, well, cardstock, it's a very, very light weight cardstock. I suggest you use, these two I just used old scraps that I had of manila envelopes, manila folders. So I suggest you use at least that thickness, if not thicker. Um, I ended up putting a vellum sticker on this one to try and make it just a little bit sturdier, but he still, uh, he works, don't get me wrong, it works. It's just, you've got to be really watchful when you're pushing it back in. I really like the sideways version. You've still got your back to journal on. Um, but yeah, I would use a thicker cardstock. Now these have come about, as I said before, a couple of different reasons. You, a lot of you know that I'm a lace junkie. You'd see it, I use it on most things. And so right beside me, two door drawers down on my left hand side I have a drawer that is just lace now I've been cutting up all my old greeting cards blank cards into about two inches by three inches and then I will hang on we'll grab just one of my little drawers and my entire drawer is full of these longer ones shorter ones so that it makes up the entire drawer and I have all my lace on it. It's a, it's a big job, don't get me wrong, but I love it. It's my, my evening jobs. So I will then cut them like so to make my little um, ribbon holders as such. But all my lace goes on it. And I've got oodles. I've been this week re-sorting and having to go to another drawer as well because I've got so much lace. So they all just sit in place. My spare ones sit in one of the gaps. And so I've been doing those. And that's how I remembered making these years ago. They are so easy. Right. So going back to our six by six paper pads or six and a half by six and a half or eight by eights if you've got eight by eights, whatever size, we just want to get through all this. So here's another one. I'm, this is one I was working on last week. If you remember, it was still sitting on my desk because no, I don't clean up. Um, so I pulled this one back out again. So we'll just keep working our way through this. Can't imagine me using this. So let's use this and see what we can come up with for it. That is my standard six and a half by six and a half. I will do, right, and I've got out a sheet, a packet of cream colored card stocks, just scraps, longer scraps. So with a scoreboard, or if you don't have a scoreboard, sit your ruler, bend it up, 
um, use an embossing stylus. Let's have a look. I should have one here somewhere. There it is. All right, that's an embossing stylus. If you don't have a scoreboard, use an embossing stylus. Um, get an old mouse mat, a little bit soft, but it's not too squishy. So the harder side at the top and use your ruler and just lightly go down. It'll give that scored line down there. If you've got an, a scoreboard, all we want is a quarter inch fold down the side. So I'm just gonna sit it anywhere, are we in shot? No, it doesn't have to be against the edge. I'm just sitting it so that it's on there and I'm going over a quarter of an inch and I'm just going to make that mark at a quarter of an inch. So you can see it on that side. Okay, so you'll see the line. This can go away now. It's just easier when you're doing a small fold like that to use an embossing stylus or a scoreboard, your bone folder, that sort of thing, than trying to do it freehand. All right, so I'm looking for that. I'm just gonna bend that over, fold him down, and then give it a nice push with your bone folder. I really suggest if you don't have a bone folder, you invest in one. There are lots of different ones around. I like the really hard ones, bone folders, because in the old day they were made from bone. These days, of course, they're not, but they're a very tough plastic. Don't get some of the flimsy ones. You want something that's going to be nice and sturdy. Right, so we've got one fold. We're just gonna free flow this one now and bring it over and bring it to the edge of our folded line. Okay. Just straight down. Move your fingers back a little bit just to gradually get it in place so that you can move this hand. Use your bone folder again. Give it a nice crisp edge like that. Okay. It's at this point you want to work out what size you want it. So, like, this one is this full size. Yeah, they work. Hang on a moment, I'll grab this journal. So this is the little journal that I'm working in at the moment. You would have seen this last week with that one. So if we go a couple of pages over, we'll go to a, just a standard pocket. So, see how they sit in? They sit in your pockets just like normal journaling cards and then they've got that secret journaling in. So that's a long one, it fits in this. The shorter one, I would sit up like that and he still fits in there. So either of those are fine. So as I said, this one's a six and a half inch in length and this one has ended up being four and a quarter. I've just chopped, literally, I just chopped. It works out where it works out. So that's four and a quarter. I really like that size. It's a me size. Doesn't necessarily mean it's a you size. Now, my other one, which was a side one, you can either have in a side pocket. I don't think I've got any in this. Oh, hang on. I do have that one. So he could go in like so and sit out like that. Okay, or if you have a larger journal, you've got bigger pockets, it can go in like that. Nice in a belly band, things like that. So it just depends on the size that you're working on. Um, my journals always tend to be different sizes. It's just whatever I pick up at the time. I never stick to one size. If I can find a different size, I'll play with it. There's always 28,000 going on in my head when I see something. Oh, I want to make that size now. Right. So this is this one, as I said before, he's six and a half. We'll work on a smaller one because I just want to show you that there's no measurements, really. So I'm just going to sit this in and chop off an end, my end shot. Yep. So my last one was four and a quarter. Let's go four and a half, just, just for kicks. So he's a little bit longer. All right, that's our size. So what we're going to do now is make our little tab that creates the pullout. So our journaling spot. So this is just, as I said before, a bag of creams. I want one. So this is now three inches. 
because it was a six and a half inch paper pad. I folded over that quarter inch and then folded it back on itself. So it's around about three, a little bit more, but three inches for my tab will mean it'll move a little bit better. So I'll see if I've got a three inch one in here. What are you? Oh, we can cut you down a little bit. And the lucky winner is, right, sit you to the side. So my tab needs to be no longer than this but it can be shorter than this. It depends on how much you want to be able to lift them out. So for me, I like this one, but really I feel that that's too long. But if you've got lots of journaling that you want to do in there, then it's not. This one's a little bit shorter. Not by much, but still a little bit shorter. And then of course my mid one, which was hard to get in and out, was just for me. A nice little size so I like that size which is you know round about that size which would be three inches so if I do a three inch one in here as well so I'm just gonna sit that in cut that off at three inches and I'm gonna make this one a square a three inch square because we know it was a little bit larger Right, like so. I'll move that back. And we want to just check. The reason we've folded this over is so that when this glues down, I've got that full section across there. So I want to see if this will fit under that tab there before I start gluing everything and in there. Look at that. That's going to slide beautifully. That's the bit you want to make sure before you get any further otherwise you've done all this work it won't slide properly and you're starting from scratch again all right so we know that this one will fit what we're going to do right i usually do just lost my pencil just lost my pencil hang on a moment let me see if i can grab it because i'm hooked up to a microphone and um that was fairly smart wasn't it and I don't have any others here. Nope. Just bear with me a moment. Oh, I've got to have another pencil here. All right, got it. I reached with my toes. Shh, don't tell anyone. Um, <laughs> normally, normally, I will make my tabs half an inch in. When I'm doing these, not when I'm doing my... Um, my lace holders so half an inch in half an inch in I was about to look for my glasses but they're on my head and round about well half an inch or if we're you know a bit over one centimeter not quite one and a half centimeters sorry I know I'm in Australia but I tend to work in inches it's one of those things. And let's go down. I tend to go down one, two, three eighths of an inch or a centimetre. How's that? So if I mark this one at a centimetre, just to really confuse you all, because I'm going to work in both measurements. How's that? A little bit for everybody that way. Down a centimetre. This will all make sense in just a moment. Right, so what I'm going to do, these are my centimetre ones. One centimetre down that way, okay. And I'm going to put my ruler there and I'm just going to mark lightly where those other spots were. Just so I can see where they need to go. And I'm going to do the same here. So a little bit there little bit there can we see those so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut from here to here along this line here to here along this line you can do them any size you like these this is the size I find that works for me and is always in my head so now I use my blade I always use my blade I find I can get a better 
cut with it, I can do what I want, stop when I want, and all the rest. Um, if you don't have a blade, it's you can do it with scissors by all means. It makes it a little bit harder. You will start here with scissors, cut in there, and then cut down that line. If you have a trimmer with a little V blade, not a rotary blade, you know, not the little round blades, but a little V blade. So, you know, the trimmers with the little blades like that. You can cut on a dime. So if you've got one of those trimmers, you can sit it in to cut to and to finish where you need it. Right. It is a bit harder with um, with rotary trimmers because they're the round circle. They're not going to stop at exactly the same spot. Oh, I made a muck of that one, didn't I? That's right. Scissors. So I've got to stop talking and just keep doing. Scissors, again, grab scissors that have got a nice point on them so that you're actually going on that finish point. Um, these ones are the new uniquely create. Geez, they need to clean, don't they? These are, I've been cutting stamps. Um, these are the new uniquely creative ones that came out around Christmas time and they've got a beautiful point. Right, so there's that. I'm going to tidy up that little bit because that is shocking, Kylie. Absolutely shocking. Right, that's it. That's your workings for the inside of this journal card. Rub out your pencil lines. Not that you'll see them, but it makes you feel better. Okay. And then what we're going to do... It, I promise this will all make sense. It's a roundabout way, but it'll all make sense. Because I'm gluing these, you can stitch these on your sewing machine if you like, and they look great. But not everybody has access to a sewing machine. So I thought I'd show you the glue versions. And then if you've got a sewing machine, it's the same sort of thing, but without the glue. And you know how to use your sewing machine. But for those, if I just showed you how to do it with a sewing machine... Those that don't have sewing machines have to rework themselves out. So I thought this was the easiest way. So I'm going to sit that in so it's round about centred. Okay. And I'm going to make a mark. If I turn that that way, you can see what I'm doing. Round about centred. Again, round about the centre. And I'm going to just make a very faint pencil mark. So can you see that? I've gone just a little bit in from where this sits. That is my glue line that I want for when I'm putting this in, okay? Because in a minute, I won't see any of that. What we're going to do now, have I confused you completely yet? Promise it wasn't my intention. So now we're going to glue this up. There's our fold, and we're going to glue the entire three sides so that it becomes fully enclosed. Okay, along there. I'm just going to do my top and my bottom first because then I can fold that tab over and glue that down. Hold that in place while I'm doing that. And then we want to glue this one. We want to make sure that we are right against the edge and we want to make sure we're right against the other edge as well because we don't want to have anything catch in there. Okay. Try not like I just did, to get it on there. Make sure that there's no glue in that. Fold this one over and glue it down. Give it a good push. We want this now fully enclosed so that there is no way in, okay? Now it's just a double-sided piece of cardstock. Truly, I kid you not. Okay, all done, all dusted, all nicely glued. Now we're going to chop it in half. Mm, in half if you want. So this one is chopped dead smack in half. I like the half, but, you know, you can chop it further up if you want. You can chop it in half. You can chop it wherever. So we made this, what did we make it? Four and a half inches. So... 
two and a quarter inches will be in half, won't it? So if I sit this back in here, go to the two and a quarter inch mark, hold on to that, and chop through. There we go. Now in two pieces. Add a little pocket here. I've got a little pocket here. And I know that they will match up completely. Okay? Because I've chopped them in half, instead of making two separate pockets, you could do it with two separate pockets. I don't want that bit inked. I don't want that colour either. Not for the orange. Um, because we've made them as one cut, they're going to perfectly match up and look like the one piece. They are double-sided so that you can put something on the back. Now, like this one, I've put extra journaling on the back of that one, okay? Put it on. It's always easier to put it on before you've cut it. You don't have to match them up. You stick the whole thing, and then you'll cut through the lot. For this one, I'm going to go fairly quickly. I don't want my pocket in. That's that side. And I'll show you what I mean. Because at the moment, I know you're sitting there and you're going, she's doing what? Because I'm just all over the show. So matching these up again. Where did that go to? Wasn't that side? Let's find a match. Was that side? Right, that's my match. So that's my top and bottom. What I want to do is with this guy... So if I look in there, can you see those pencil marks that I made before? Can you see them? One there, one there. That's so that I can now sit this in. All right, so that when it's even, I can now glue to those lines because they're far enough away that they're not going to catch this. So I mean, if you're sewing, you'll just sew straight around. If you're gluing, it's just as easy, really, really. So I'm going to just sit. I'm trying to do this so that I'm angled that way and you can see where I'm going. I'm just going to tuck you to the side. A right, little bit of glue. We don't want too much because we don't want it to rub out. And I want to do my other side at the same time. Can you see that? I'm hoping you can see it. I'm hoping, hoping. All right, make sure that that's nice and straight and still in between those lines. Give it a push. Okay. doesn't matter if this is a little bit crooked at the moment because it'll straighten up because we haven't actually caught it, see? So now we've got this. Simple as that. Now, if you're going to, like this one, stamp on it, I suggest you stamp on it before you put it in your little pocket, okay? Gluing it in is technically the last thing you want to do to this if you've got it already, if you want it lined. So like that one, I just used this stamp. So it's nicely lined and all the rest. And I just stamped it both sides before I put it in. Um, put my flower on it, all the rest. So it's, it's up to you, truly. All right, so now we're going to do our other side. I just want to make sure that this is my right match. Yes, it is. So I should have my lines in here again. I'm taking that all the way. So you can see those little pencil lines just in here. I don't know if you can. If I... Can you see the little pencil lines? Right, so we're going to do exactly the same thing. Just turning that around. Little pencil line going with my glue. You don't have to go all the way to it because you know your glue's going to spread out a little bit anyway. Hiding that. Closing that side. Closing that side. Make sure you don't have this in that glue section. And you're done. That is it. Okay. Make sure there's no glue on my hands as per normal. Make sure he wants to slide. Make sure he wants to slide. And they should match up. Look at that. So what you've created is that. It is so easy. Now, as I said before, you can have it going that way. You can have it going 
up and down. So let's just let's just straighten it up as I go. <laughs> I think I want my pattern to go that way up. Let's decorate it. Now, my other thing that I wanted to start using with my paper pads, I don't know about you, I have got tw the 12 inch by 12 inch sticker sheets. All right, hands up. Who's got them? I've got both hands up. I've got so many of these things. And I've kept them because I like them. But am I using them? No. They're over behind me, sorted into my one of my cube units with the little shelves in it, the 12 by 12 cube units. And I've got three of those shelves dedicated to the 12 by 12 stickers. I've got Kaiser Craft, of course, which is the majority of them. I've got basic grey ones. I've got um, Graphic 45. I've got, I don't know, there's a whole of other brands in there as well. And I thought this is ridiculous. So, and I did this one. If I can use just one thing out of these sticker sheets, I'll be happy. So, like, I had this sticker sheet there. Now, why am I not using this? Look at all these wonderful quotes. Look at all the clocks. And out of this sticker sheet, I'd used one quote from the centre of that and a little bit of that. What's that? So, I've now used a drawer as well, which was the drawer down here. And I took it off, put it on some, just some paper, inked around it and stuck it on to make just another little tag at the front. So I decided from now on, when we're doing these, I'm gonna pull out the sticker sheet. So now that sticker sheet that didn't match that. They don't have to match paper pads. So this one, and I did see this orange in there before and thought I'm probably never gonna use that for anything else. But I'd pulled out, now I've had this for 2012, all right? This Graphic 45, a Ladies Diary stickers, I've had since 2012. Why am I not using it? But it does go really well with that orange. Okay, so I'm going to decorate this one with that orange. Now, look at this. It's got wording. It's got this wonderful bit down here. Again, it is easier to decorate these when they're still full, before you've cut them. But I wanted to show the early levers. <laughs> Does that make sense? How to actually make the section. Because I know there's lots of people out there that just want to see the basics to see how it's made so that they can move on. Some people like to see the decorating as well. So I've done this this way so that... Thanks for joining us, guys. You've seen how it's done. And I'll see you next time. But for the rest of us, hang around. We're going to decorate it. Okay, so I really like this. I really like this. But it's going to need to be in two bits now because I have cut. Okay, so if I do that, and if I cut between the fashion and the plate, they are a really good stick still from 2012 2012 and it came out in 1912 look at that oh, other way around <laughs> you know what i mean so this is going to go here but when you're using your old sticker sheets i suggest you put a little bit of glue down because they the stick might be there, but I can't guarantee how much longer the stick is going to be there. You want to pop these in your journals, or if you're making these as greeting cards, you want to make sure they're not going to come off on somebody. So, we're doing this for keeps type thing. So, this one's going to go down here, and I can trim that end off, like so. Your glue just means that it'll hold on just a little bit longer. Right, so my other end is, of course, going to go up there so it looks like it's all in one. 
It's warm here again today, so my glue is running and I forgot to put the lid back on. So I just wipe that so I don't end up with a big blob because I just want to do a delicate little piece of glue just up the side. So this series that was using up your 12 by 12s that morphed into using up your 6 by 6 and your 12 by 12s will now be using up your 12 by 12s, your 6 by 6s and all your sticker sheets. How's that? All right. So we are now one piece again. We will trim that off. And I will put that one back on there to use at a later date. Because I'm going to use these. Right. So that's that little bit. And I just want to say I love her. I love it all. Oh, look, she's a frame. All right. But I'm going to put both of them in there. But I'm not going to just sit it on. Are you going to fit now? Yes, you will. I want to put some... I have a fair whack of glue already on them. I just want to see how it's going to go. So I'm just going to very lightly sit it there. She's going to very lightly sit inside. And I'm going to pull these back off. So I'm just, just working out vaguely where I want them at this stage. I'm thinking I want a little bit of lace sitting down here. And I want some wording down here. And I want, and I want, and I want, and I want. See now, this is nice. Look at this. That would work really well if I'd done one of the sideways ones. All right. You're there. I want something coming out from under you, whether I use this one or whether I use... Let's use one of the clocks from the other one. I want one of these lighter clocks in the white. So this one. Okay. Just going to ink that edge. Just so it stands out a little bit. And I want that up under there. All right. So that one I'm going to stick down straight away. That was easy, wasn't it? Sometimes it works. See, you don't need to stick to the one range, I suppose would be the word I'm looking for here. You can mix and match your ranges. Now, there'll be an up and a down on that, won't there? <laughs> X2 is 12. So right up in the corner. Which means I'm going to drop her down a little bit. She's now going to go over there, I'm thinking, like that. And a little bit of cheesecloth because this is me we're talking about. So hang on a moment. Now I've got very dark. I've got a cream and I've got a white. Thinking I want my dark. So let's just chop a little bit. And I can play with it, can't I? That's in the third drawer down, which is lace scraps and fabric scraps in two little containers. I'm going to just stretch that out. I only want a little bit because I just want it to tuck out. Just give him some, give him some love. You can see that. And then if that's down there like that, and that's sticking up like that. Yeah, I'm liking that. Yep. Right. So, move you away, love. Sit you back there. This one needs some glue on it. Which I didn't put the lid back on again. All right. Right around there. Little dollops of glue so that I don't lift that cheesecloth up where I've got it. And we might go to the 
tweezers so I can actually get my finger off that. Right. Okay, pop the lid on the glue, Kylie. So this is now going down into that other corner. Like so. Give it a push. Taking a little bit off that. Just so it's it's there, but it's not sitting too far over it like that. Right. Now, our lady in the centre. I could use my glue stick with this, but I can't be bothered. <laughs> um, I'd have to get out my glue paper to sit underneath it, so let's just do this way. And as I said before, they are a really good stick still for all that time, um, but I'm still not game enough to not put the glue on them. So we'll just make sure that we put pop glue on them. All right. So I'm gonna bring this up because that way you don't get my head in the center, just so that I can because my eyes aren't working brilliantly today. Pull those tweezers out and then I can manipulate it in. There we go. So now she's back as one solid piece. So there's that. Little bit of lace down here because we have to. <laughs> so the lace I'm looking for is, is that one? No, it's not that one. So that one, I think. No, it's too heavy. I've got a really nice new lace. <laughs> got so much new lace, it's not funny. But I've got a really nice one that I'm just in love with at the moment that I'm using and using and using and using. That's too heavy as well. They're not the ones I'm looking for. Maybe I need to go into a lighter lace. Let's have a look. Blue. Ooh. Why have I got a blue lace in with the cream ones? I don't know. Let's just pull it out. Oh, hang on. There might be a piece of it in my scrap box. That might be easier. Yeah, there it is. That's the one I was looking for. Simple as that. Because it's lace, but it's so delicate. Love it. I love this one. Very nice. All right. So I want that, and I want something going on down here. And I still want to use this. So let's have a look. Got some corners. A corner down here would be nice. What would... We had those, and we had the blue. I don't really want the blue. I could put them on a brown... Or a black. I should, hang on a moment. I should have a piece of black sitting here. A black. That's black. If I do that, so let's have a look. This one, this one's going to be easier to cut, isn't it? Just saying. Set you to the side. And what I'm going to do is double mount that on there. Do I want both sides? Just very lightly, yep. All right. So a little bit of glue again. Pop that in there. This is just a piece of black cardstock. I just want a very, very tiny Pull that up so that it, and because it's glue on there, I've got time to move it a little bit. All right, so see how it's only just a little bit. And what it'll do is it'll give us just a fraction of a, a shadow, I suppose would be the best word for it. I'm just going to move that back. I've got one eye closed here. There we go. Yep. Oh, it's not good at all. 
I reckon my sinuses are about to start playing up again. I lose my eyesight with my sinuses, as in everything's a bit fuzzy. And now I can do it with my blade or I can do it with these nice little sharp guys. If they were clean, I could do it easier. Right, that's the next job. That's the next job, I'm telling you now. You can tell I'm concentrating. Can't see that side, can I? Pretty good, pretty good. So see what I've got now is a double mount. So down here, I've got that. I like that. Still needs something on there, doesn't it? Still needs something, and I want... Mm. I know, that makes sense, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> does i'm telling you all right let's just pull the standard out i have my little boxes of bits because i like my boxes of bits and so this one is now uh, usually the journals that i'm working on at the time but it's got some old newspaper bits i've actually old book pieces but i do have my newspaper pieces let's have a look and see color wise What's going to work? I think they're too light. Hmm. I'll pull out that one and that one, and we'll have a look. That will give me two different colours. Oh, Carl's Book Arcade. Now I want something else on that. <laughs> I do that. We need a word. We need a word. A word will fix all. So, and I know I didn't have any in those. What have we got in here that we could just utilise? I should have brought all of them over, shouldn't I? All right, we'll go to the words. We'll go to words, which are just here. All right, words. Now, I have this lovely one that was um, scrapbookfantasies.com.au. They're an Australian company. That's their website, www.scrapbookfantasies.com.au. And it came like that. I've cut it in half to put it in my word one. But they're just my colours. They're just individual words and they work a treat. So, they're going to fade in that one. So, let's go to this one. Cherish works. Remember, charming. Charming. Let's do charming because charming is up there. We'll need to actually cut him out there. So, I'm just going to, again, use my blade and my ruler. Take it from there, back over, because I'm trying not to move that. What does I say I'm cutting out? Charming, as in prints. Now I'm just going to follow that up. I could tear it, which would look nice as well either side, but there we go. Sit you back in there. I want a little bit of oomph. All right. It's all right. I'm just, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, um, what did I do with that? Put it all back? No, no. It's all right. It's in front of me. It's in front of me. Just one a little bit. So this one is coffee dyed. The other one that I had, the lighter one, of course, was tea dyed. 
and of course the other one is just the plain white. So that way it depends on what I'm doing, it will depend on what I'm using. Like that there, and that there. I need that tucked in there. And that one up there. Like that. Yep, happy with that. Right, so the original one, which is that one, can be stuck down. I'm just going to use that as my glue thing. Because that is an old newspaper um, from the 1800s, it is very fragile. So you have to be careful when you're gluing these sorts of ones down. So he's going to be sitting in that. And don't wipe too hard because you will just tear them. Uh, the rest I'll use my normal glue on. I just want to make a... a bzz. But I've now got so much glue on my hands that it's making no difference. So I'm going to actually use some double-sided tape on that one just to hold that down. Uh, what do I want? That size, I think, which is just that quarter inch, would be quarter inch. See, and this is why they're getting sticky because I'm not meant to be using those ones for this. It's all right. We've promised that we're going to clean it afterwards anyway, haven't we? Take my back off. Why won't you come off? That's because the other one came off so beautifully. Little bit down that way, a little bit up there. I want to see a little bit of the orange. All right. And because this is going over that, I'm going to pop double-sided tape behind that one as well to save me mucking around with a bit of glue. I'll fold that bit back. All right. There's that one. All we've got left to do is our lace. But you can decorate these any way you like, any side, but let's start using up all our sticker sheets as well. All right, I will now need a little bit of glue and I'm just going to go into my fabric glue this time. But it is hot today, warm. We've had quite a heat wave lately. Today's not as hot as it has been, but the glues are all still warm. So I'm just getting rid of the rest of that that was sitting on there from the last time, which would have been last night, I reckon. And I want a very fine bead just under where that gap is. Come on. Right, so, so hang on, if I lift that out, you can see where I'm going to. How's that? So I'm just going against my black edging. I'm just going to lightly push it down as I go across. Turning that over. Using the now very sticky scissors, like so. That one back in there. All right, how's that? So we've used the Kaiser Craft Marigold paper pad from many, many, many years ago. And then we've used the Graphic 45 Ladies Diary sticker sheet from 2012. 
can't say I'm a hoarder at all, can you? So really, the making of them is extremely quick and extremely easy. I'm just popping that word one back again. It's the decorating. As per normal, the decorating is what takes the longest. We've got wide ones. Oh, I've got a word still sitting there. Another short one and another long one. What do we reckon? Will we go ahead and make some of those? Let's get through more and more. So there's three, four sheets out of my six by six paper pads. Six and a half, six and a half, if we want to be technical. I'm going to work my way through these. Let's see what we come up with for next weekend. Until then, happy crafting. So glad you've come along for the journey. If you haven't subscribed, I would love you to subscribe. If you're happy with this, give me a thumbs up. Feel free, comment. I do get back to you. It takes me a little while sometimes, but I do get back, I promise. And until next time, bye guys.